And now, ladies and gentlemen, your official introductions for this amateur welterweight competition. First, the fighter standing in the blue corner. This fighter is 26 years of age. He stands five feet, seven inches tall, and weighed in at 77 kilograms. He has a record of one win and no losses, no draws. That win coming within the distance. Hailing from Bridgewater, James the Bulldog Border. And his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 26 years of age. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall, and weighed in at 77 kilograms. He has a record of two wins, one loss, and no draws. One win coming by way of submission. Hailing from South Africa by way of Bristol, Guy Lewis. And his bout is held over three, four minute rounds. Okay, well, there's a huge crowd excitement for this fight. Guy Lewis versus James the Bulldog Borden. Yeah, 77 kilos, so a welterweight fight at amateur rules. Yeah, this is going to be a volatile fight. The crowd are on their feet. They are up for this. And if anything, they want to get in control of themselves so that we can see an entertaining fight. Yeah, certainly. But no one ever wants a fight to get stopped because of the crowd. James has come in with a southpaw stance, and he's... he's hammering him in the corner there and ragging him about with trying and to get James him to the ground. Borden, he's a little stocky fighter, he looks so powerful. Yeah, I mean, those uh, those legs look seriously powerful, but he's been turned over. Yeah, dropping it. The guy Lewis, South African um, by birth, dropping down, takedown, beautiful takedown. Yeah, he's controlling his legs and now he's starting to work out the body, but he wants to be careful not to get caught in half guard or guard itself. He wants to try and get a good platform to either work some shots in. Oh, we've got a no. guillotine attempt there from the little strong man. Yeah, that was a failed attempt there, and he's going to, he's going to settle down into side mount position. Let's hope that uh, Lewis can actually get this platform and get some strikes in. Yeah, certainly, I mean, they call him the Bulldog. He's definitely, you can see why he gets that nickname. Yeah, he it does look relentless. And uh, he's not leaving anything to chance, but when I mean, obviously Lewis is controlling him at the moment, but well, oh, lovely little knee to the body. He found that opening then. Look at the the experience we've got in the corner of Guy Lewis. He's got Wesley Mertz, you know, star of the small screen. Yeah, on, uh, tape. He got a full blackout on tape me out, but you know he, he was there. Yeah, very good MMA fighter. And uh, we've he, also got Paul Reed. Of yeah, very, if you didn't very recognise him with the beard there. <laughs> when I first saw him, I thought it was a hobo, but then I realised it was Paul Reed. So right. now we've got Guy Lewis on top. All he needs to do now is clear that hand from behind his head, posture up, and start striking. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to see. I want, I want to see some quality ground and pound. He's, he's, he's in this mid mount now. I don't like this. I think if you're in mount, this is the weakest position. This way it can be reversed. Either stay in a tight bottom mount or go to a high mount. He yeah. needs to get those hands from behind his back so, he's, so he can clear his head and make room to strike. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know why he's staying so low. I and mean, He's the one who should be dictating from this position. And at the moment, well, he looks to see he's working the arm trial, but he couldn't get that arm trapped. Yeah, he's, he's sort of back down to a low mount now. He, all he, needs to, he just needs to cross face, try and get his head clear and just yeah, make some space. away at that face. That's what he really wants to do. I mean, this is... Uh, an amateur bounce, so there are no elbows to the face, but he can certainly push. There he goes, there he's got the space, but he dropped, he, he, he voluntarily dropped back down there. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused as to why he did that. I'd you know, I mean, for me, the mount position, I think once you get past guard, it's worth pulling them away from the cage. It, it stops giving them the opportunity to use the cage to push off or move. Uh, if I pass guard, if I'm in guards, ground and pounding, I stick them up against the fence and use yeah. the fence. Once I pass guard, I'd rather move them away. Yeah, he's he's Look giving the he's giving the bulldog a little bit too much space on the ground there. Now that's better. That is better work. He's postured up. That's exactly what we're saying. He's postured up and he's working those strikes. That's where he needs to stay. You see the hand of the bulldog getting behind his head, but he's there. He's doing exactly the right things. Now this is what we want to see. He's much, keeping his head away. He's giving himself better room action. to fire those strikes in. Now I've got the better angle. Unfortunately, he's been held at the moment. He's just basing out so that uh, 
James can get a position to try and reverse him, but yeah, I, think so he, I think he'll regain some posture, regain some energy, and then start to pepper him with some more strikes. Again, what he needs to do is clear that hand from behind his head, posture up, and start to work the solid strikes. I mean, get that forearm in on that chin and grind it. Really, exactly. uh, and there he is. There, there he is. That's what he needs to do. I'd like to see him up there a little bit longer, longer instead of. He has well, he's having a, some great shots coming down on top of him, but after he finishes with that shot, his body follows down on top as well. That's right. Well, I'll guarantee you, Mr. Paul Reed and Mr. Wesley Merch will be telling him now, posture up and fire those strikes in. Exactly. You know, he's doing everything right, and he's, he's got the positions right, he's got the takedowns, very nice takedown, in fact. You yeah. know, against, against the Bulldog who really initiated the takedown. He did, it did. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, another reminder. You must stay in your seats if you're on the seated tables. You must stay in the seats. Shout as loud as you want, but please give respect to the fighters. Give respect to everybody else who's seated, who wants to see the fights. So a call there from the MCs. We need yeah. to keep everyone in the seats. Everyone's so excited for this fight. They There's are a, there. a they huge crowd for both guys. They can't contain themselves, can they? I seem to be able to stay in my seat. I'm struggling to stay in my seat, to be honest. I'm only doing it for the crowd behind me. <laughs> They're paying the money. Now, I don't know whether you can hear these chants, but they are loud. <laughs> Absolutely deafening here. Look at the intensity there on Gordon's face. And he's so focused. I mean, each of them has a game plan, and unfortunately, uh, Lewis is dictating it again. Unfortunately for Borden. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, he's dropped it. He's managed to get him caught in half guard. Here we go. Yeah, he, here Wesley Murch is screaming to his opponent how to pass this. If he can get that knee down, all, he'll be able to slide he, the all, end Yeah, exactly. All he really needed to do then. Yeah, there you and go. And there we go. He's through. Now he needs to posture up. Get and that, start putting get those that right in. arm out from behind his head. And uh, push off. His why, <laughs> I struggle to understand there why he didn't posture up because. He was holding himself down. As it, exactly. I mean, he's, doing, he's not doing himself any favours at the moment. There now he's got go. There we That's go. It. Get your head out and fire the strikes in. He needs to clear the arms. Yep. Maybe even pin one of the arms with a knee. I mean, I like to see some wrist control as well. And then push that defence to the side and then throw a strike. Again, he's dropped down tight. He must like this sort of dropping down tight into that position. I don't know why. He, he's pushing his head down. He was, he was trying to push his dead head down under his armpit. And I, he's... He tried earlier in the first round to go for that arm triangle, and it didn't succeed. But he needs to be setting it up a little bit uh, more effectively with peppered strikes. And again, he's sat in that mid-mount position, which I think is a risk for being swept. You know, your opponent could turn you from there. Low mount, nice and tight, or high mount tight. Mid-mount is very dangerous, yeah, in my opinion. You know, his base isn't there. He's up a little higher, but That's his knees... That's a bit better. Little intervention from the referee there, but it seems to be got back to the action again. And James is tying him up again. Yeah, he just needs to clear those arms and throw the strikes in some room. You know, these little chopping shots while your head's down, he's not getting anything. He's holding on to the fence here. Yeah, just there. James Borden, referee spots that. Looks to me now like uh, Lewis may be looking for a submission. Yeah, he seems to want to grapple a great deal more by getting in close and trying to fish his head underneath him. Yeah, he's, so he's working on the strikes here. He's working on the strikes here. Again, I just think he needs to clear the hands. He needs to uh, clear the hands from the head, make some room and work. You know, if he threw a flurry of strikes, he could get this fight stopped. Yeah, he, easily. All he needs is a, one of them to connect, which will open up that weakness when he's dazed. And then he can capitalise on it. But then again, Bowden on the ground, he's not sitting back. He is active the whole time. And although his bridges aren't getting him anywhere at the moment, it's still making him uh, have to fight. He certainly is, but Lewis is just way too keen to drop down and tie himself up. You know, he's done it again there. You know, if you're going to strike, if, if your plan is to strike and finish a fight, posture up and fire the strikes in. If mm. your plan is to grapple, stay down low and look for a submission, but he just, he seems to be kind of stuck between two. Now he's looking for a submission, maybe. Yeah, he needs to drop that out, and he's lost it, unfortunately. Yeah. 
And, and that's exactly what I'm saying about that mid-mount position. It, it's like he's not really decided what he wants to do. No, 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 very indecisive. But at the moment, he's still been winning this round. But he could have been having a few opportunities to actually finish the fight. And they seem to be a little bit of a stalemate there because uh, James has got him up against the cage and he's pushing heavily and really pulling on that single leg takedown. But great defense there from Lewis. The referee might break them up, I think, is, uh, or is looking for the... Again, they see Lewis uh, maybe a bit too ready to go to his back. Yep, into the round there. The round's gone. Again, another big round there for, uh, for Guy Lewis, but... Is he going to look back at his tape and think, I could have finished this fight about five times? Yeah, he's, he will look back at this video and actually think to himself, right, what am I doing wrong? And the, the first and most obvious thing that his corner are probably saying to him right now is posture up. Get a few of those shots in and then try and get an opening to actually finish the fight because he has the capability to do that with, with the strikes that we've seen from him earlier. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my opinion would be posture up and fire a flurry of strikes or... If you're wanting to get a submission, you know, if you're looking to um, uh, to work a Kimura into an armbar or something like that, get yourself down yeah. into that position, but work, really work for it, you know. he's it's, it's like he's not looking for a finish, he can't decide what he wants to do. No, and it should be there with the, uh, with the experience that he's got in his corner, and that's what, at the end of this fight, win or lose, they will take that back. And, and look at Paul Reed, there you can see Paul Reed's been around this game a long time, he's now 78 years old, and he knows this game inside out. Well, I mean, by the looks of him, he's, I don't know whether he's going to get a good, good pension from the MMA world, but he needs to buy a razor. <laughs> you get the first MMA pension. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh big great shot singular there strike the there. He's rocked. But a great comeback. Well, that's the sign of a good fighter, you know. Yeah, he got, he got a solid shot to the face there and still managed to complete the takedown. So he's in there, he's got this this knee ride. Yeah, he's... Let's get some space now and fire some shots. Yeah, he did have that position just now, but he's just gone and closed it down again. And, th well, he threw a shot into the body with the knees. But we want to be careful that he doesn't get caught in this position again and not being able to get the platform to get the strikes in. He does have an arm trapped. Yeah, he does, and now he's working some strikes in there. You know, he can't take many unanswered strikes without the referee stopping it. And if Guy can readjust his position, oh. is, he, is he going Look for the Kimura? He's going for the Kimura. He needs to step over the head. Watch this space, guys. We may see a submission. He's, he's going for that straight armbar. We saw Hoist Gracie and Matt Hughes in this position for a very long time. <laughs> I mean, James has got some strong arms, and he was resistant heavily on that. But they're back to that side mount position. And, I mean... Those stocky, powerful arms are so hard to submit. <laughs> I wouldn't like to try on that. Now, does... It looked like he was going to take the back. He's got his back to that mount. I mean, he's been... He's got to work his way into the mount. A bit mount. negative to Guy Luz, you know, saying... But he's been completely dominant. Let's not get that yeah. wrong. Positional... has been completely dominant. Positional control and... He has got the position and he has been controlling the fight and the strikes will come later on in his career as an MMA fighter. Yes, and certainly. From the fights that I've watched from Paul Reed and from Wesley Murch, they have a very strong ground and pound base. And he's looking for that arm triangle again, but Guy seems to be pulling it, realising it and getting that elbow safe again. Yeah, certainly. I mean, like I said, we're, we're, I'm being critical here of Guy Lewis, but only because I'm a little frustrated because I can just see the opportunity for him to finish this fight so many times, and it, you know, and it's going to go to points. However, have you ever looked back on your fights and? I look back on even my wins and think I could have done better. Well, and I think yeah. that's an important thing for any fighter to do. You know, don't come out of a win and think, yeah, I was brilliant. You know, Everybody go to tell everyone how great you are as a cage fighter. As long as, as, long as you're pos positive with your reflection on your fights, you'll always improve. And yeah. you'll see that in the top, top echelon of uh, the uh, mixed martial arts game. You see fighters that will pick apart and critique their fights, whether it's win, lose, or draw. And, and I think that's exactly the right thing to do. And I think Guy Lewis, along with his team, like I said, a very experienced team, will look back at this fight and say, yeah, this thing's a good change. However, this is a dominant win. It's, you know, it's won every a single minute of this fight. great little chest press there. A horrible. Horrible for the guy underneath. 
But yeah, I mean, there isn't long left of this fight, and he's gone and got that. He's gone and posture up again. And he's controlling the wrists, and then we just want to see that last little bit of some strikes. Now there he's pinning the arm. Oh. That's what I want to see in the first round. Pin the arm and fire a strike. Now that beautiful right hand, it hit the mat just because uh, James ducked out of the corner of it. Yeah, so again there, you see, he fired the shots, but then looked to submit. Sometimes they, you know, you know, switch between one or the other, make a bit of a decision, you can do well, but... I mean, for James at the moment, he's he's starting to uh, lose his energy, and he is, he is really trying to bridge, but he's not getting it paid off. Fair play to James, he's been in a one-sided fight for, you know, for three, four-minute rounds. We've got ten seconds left. Yeah. A totally dominant performance from Guy Lewis. James Barber stayed in it. However, oh, Guy he, Lewis... He's <laughs> got his back right at the end of the fight. Too little, too late oh, there. If, from if the only we'd dog. seen that sooner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after three hard border rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges see this the same way for your winner by way of unanimous decision in the red corner, Guy Lewis! Put your hands together for a tough opponent, the man they call the Bulldog, James Borden!